Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Crime Junkies. Six. Arthur Shawcross. So, are you getting the picture yet? A surprising number of serial killers learned their trade in the military, or at least they got hooked on violence and became desensitized to it to such a degree that they just couldn't stop killing when they returned from active duty. The case of the Genesee River Killer perhaps demonstrates this best, or maybe it doesn't. You see, there is some debate as to the military career of Rochester's Arthur Shawcross. In the late 1980s, he killed at least 14 young women. Five, Anthony Sowell. Between May 2007 and September 2009, Anthony Sowell committed 11 brutal murders that would earn him the nickname The Cleveland Strangler. A violent crack cocaine user, Sowell's violence against women started when he was young. From age 11, he raped his young niece on an almost daily basis. This carried on until he was 19 years old. Six a decade later, Sowell was jailed for 15 years for kidnapping and raping a pregnant woman. Once out, he began a campaign of terror and murder that would see 11 young women die at his hands. Between 1978 and 1989, though, Sowell, it seems, quelled his violent instincts at least long enough to dedicate himself for more than a decade to the United States Marine Corps. Sowell knuckled down in the Marines, reaching the rank of corporal. 4. John Allen Muhammad If there's one thing you could say about John Allen Muhammad, it's that he was a damn good sniper. Between 1991 and 1994, he was a respected marksman in the Gulf War, earning himself an expert rifleman's badge. He would also go on to pick up the Southwest Asia Service Medal and two Kuwait Liberation Medals during his service. The sniper tag stuck though, and with good reason. Since 2002, the Baton Rouge-born Muhammad has been known as the Washington Sniper. His army training was put to grotesque use against the citizens of the country he had once served but now hated. Full of rage at American conduct in the Middle East, he drove around the US Capitol in a van with a young accomplice, picking off 27 people and killing 17 of them. 3. Howard Unruh Eerily similar to the Washington sniper case is the story of Battle of the Bulge hero Howard Unruh. Some 50 years before Muhammad took his firearms training live onto American streets, decorated US Army tank soldier Unruh became America's first rampage killer after taking what came to be known as his Walk of Death. It was around 9.20 a.m. on September 6, 1949, when Unruh stepped outside of his Camden, New Jersey home. It was a bright and busy morning in the neighborhood and people milled about around him. Not long after leaving the house, he pulled out his trusty Luger P08 pistol and began firing. In just 12 minutes, he had killed 13 people. 2. Charles Whitman The Texas Tower Sniper earned his nickname after climbing to the top of a tower at the University of Texas in Austin and calmly shooting dead 14 people and injuring another 31. It was 1966 and Charles Whitman's actions shocked America. That shock turned to horror when it was announced that Whitman was a decorated Marine who had only just been discharged from active duty. While in the military, he earned a Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal and the Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal. He also received special training by the Naval Enlisted Science Education Program, a covert intelligence agency. When it came to marksmen, Whitman was as good as it got. On August 1st, 1966, he would prove to the world just how good a shot he was and in quite a devastating style. He took three rifles, three pistols, and a shotgun up to the tower, and methodically began picking off strangers until he was shot dead himself by police. Whitman left a note saying, I don't quite understand what is compelling me. I have been to a psychiatrist. I have violent impulses. One, Timothy McVeigh. The Oklahoma City bomber, as Timothy McVeigh would come to be known, was decorated with multiple awards during his time as a tank commander in the Gulf War. But anti-government sentiment in him grew until his anger at US foreign policy eventually turned into hatred. And out of that hatred, a plan was born. Soon McVeigh was driving a truck full of explosives into downtown Oklahoma City and blowing up a federal office building. Just a few years previously, McVeigh had left the US military with a bronze star for heroism. He was even invited to try out for the special forces. Instead, he eventually killed 168 innocent people and maimed several hundred more on April 19, 1995, in Oklahoma City. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them.